Let me turn that music off. I don't want to get a copyright violation, but you just can't cook unless you have a little Marshall Tucker playing or uh, maybe some Almond Brothers. It's a preacher, and it's not my day off. Actually, it's a work day for me, and I'm, I'm at the kitchen and uh, at the church. I know some of you don't believe I'm a pastor, and that's because of my less than stellar hair, but really bad hair and all. I'm really a preacher, and I'm in the church kitchen. Today we're cooking enchiladas for the church. This is going to be part of the Dinner for a Crowd series, or Dinner for 40, uh, which is what I'm preparing for. We're going to do enchiladas. We're going to make chicken enchiladas, beef enchiladas, which I just finished browning, and deer enchiladas out of some of that dough that I shot with um, Ozark Spirit uh, last week. So anyways, I've got the chicken filling done. I've got the beef filling done. Let me show you how I make uh, the deer filling for our enchiladas. First thing we want to do is plug in the electric skillet. Uh, I grew up with the electric skillet. It is a great piece of, a, uh, of, an, of, of American ingenuity and it works great, especially if you get one with tall sides on it. I just cooked the beef in here first because it had a little bit of fat. That's 90-10. There's a little bit of fat on the bottom and I need that fat because this deer has none. I haven't added anything to it. So to this skillet that I've just heated up, I'm going to add, these are sweet peppers. Uh, you can get a bag of them at Sam's. Look like that. So I'm going to add those. And that's like, I don't know, four of them cut up, diced up. And then I'm going to add, I don't know, half a cup of onions. We want to give them a little bit of a head start on the meat because if I add this two pounds of deer meat in there, it'll be done before those get good and soft. So if we cook them till they start to just turn a little bit translucent, they'll be nice and soft like this because we don't want to crunch. If we want to add fresh uh, peppers, we can do that right before we put them in the oven, but we want them soft and we want them just to impart flavor. And that's a good flavor. Okay, when your onions and peppers start to look about like that, so they're starting to get a little bit translucent. You can tell they've been coated by oil. They're starting to soften. Now's when we'll add our meat. Here I have one freshly shot dough. Well, not one of her. I've got two pounds of her in here. And when I ground this up and packed it last Saturday, today's Wednesday, so three or four days ago, I added a little less than a half a package of taco seasoning that I had laying around the kitchen just so we could marinate in that. And so, let me stir this around a little bit. So I won't have to add as much taco seasoning to this as I did to that because I had a package of just regular old taco seasoning laying around the house. I buy taco seasoning at Sam's. This is Tone's brand. You can use whatever you want. I think it was McCormick that I put in here to start with, but it needed a little more. Show you what that looks like. There you go, that's about two pounds of deer meat and four or five of the sweet peppers and the onions. With taco seasoning to taste. I'm gonna call that cooked, it looks cooked to me. I just tasted some of it, it's delicious. Let's unplug it and drain it. Just a little pro tip, when you finish with that electric skillet, wipe it out real quick. Put some water and some soap in it and let it soak and anything that's stuck to the bottom will come right up. Uh, you don't want to just set it aside and wait till you're done cooking and then at the end, oh hey look, here's some uh, meat that is permanently bonded to the non-stick coating of the bottom of my electric skillet. Bad news, don't do that. There you have it. Beef, deer, hard to tell them apart. This is 
some fire roasted tomato salsa cilantro plus New Mexico chili from Fonterra. That's, um, I think it's Rick Bayless. It's like a Mexico cook, Mexico one plate at a time TV show on AETN, which I really used to like to watch it a lot. And I always thought, man, I ever go to Chicago, but I'll never go to Chicago because you can't carry a gun in Chicago. But if I ever ended up somewhere where he had a restaurant, I was going to go eat there. So I'm in the Whole Foods Market, a place I never go. I'm checking out and I look over and there's Fonterra Salsa. And I'm like, Fonterra, isn't that the... So I'm looking on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm reading, created by Rick Bayless, award-winning chef, author. Yeah, television show. Oh, yeah. So I brought this home. I'm like, chips and salsa, right? I'm all excited. It ain't that good. <laughs> it ain't that good. But it wouldn't be bad if you're just wanting to put some flavor in meat. And that's what we're wanting to do. So... I have about a quarter of this jar gone. I'm going to pour some in each pan till it's gone. I split it about 50-50. That's a 16 ounce jar. I probably had 12 ounces, so I put six ounces to two pounds if you're writing recipes down. It's not bad salsa. It's just not what I'm used to using for a dipping sauce, you know, for a chips and salsa. It'd be fine in a recipe. What this will really do is it will put some moisture into this meat so that you don't have real dry, crumbly hamburger meat inside your fajitas or inside your enchiladas. So that story I was telling you about being in Whole Foods and seeing Rick Bayless's Salsa, he had some tomatilla salsa in there too, and I bought it, and guess what? It was nothing special either. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that. There again, you don't want to taste, it doesn't need to taste like salsa. You just want some Mexican flavors and some moisture in the meat, and that's all we're going for. And nobody's going to taste this and go, boy, did you put Rick Bayless's salsa in there? Because it sure tastes like it. It really don't. You'll never even know it. There. See how, how moist that looks? That's, that's all you're going for. You just, you just want it to look moist. You want it to have flavor. Let's see what we got here. That's good. That's real good. That's so good. A city boy would eat that and never know it was deer meat. I hate turning off Marshall Tucker Band, but that's just part of keeping you guys in the loop. All right, we are going to make the chicken enchiladas first. I'm going to show you how I made the chicken filling. Chicken filling is totally different than the beef or the deer filling. I'll get those over here out of the way. We'll do those next. No need to refrigerate them. This is the chicken filling. This is one large rotisserie chicken that I've pulled all the meat off of and chopped it up finely. To that, I added some of that green tomatillas salsa that I had probably about two-thirds of a jar, 12 ounces. Then I added about a cup of sour cream, and that gives it the white, creamy look. Also, I added the taco seasoning to taste. So taco seasoning, tomatilla salsa, and sour cream to the chick a large rotisserie chicken. I bought it at Sam's. I use this store brand, Essential Everyday, green enchilada salsa for the uh, chicken. I use red for the beef for the deer. Anyways, I figure one can per 10 enchiladas. That's just about the way it works out. So I've had three cans here. I'm planning on making 30 of those. I added it to the bottom of this pan. 
I'm going to try to squeeze 30 inch enchiladas in there. I don't know if I can. I don't normally use Mission brand, but I am this time. I hope they turn out okay. There's 40 in here. I think that's right. 40 count. I'm going to make 30, so I got 10 still in the sack. I'll put them over there. Lay it over, roll it, squeeze it up in there tight. Lay it over, roll it, squeeze it up in there. Well, there's what you end up with. I have nine sideways and 17 uh, stacked long ways. See it like that. And uh, that's 26. I wanted to get 30 to a pan, uh, but I don't want to tighten them any more than they already are so anyways we're okay with that let's show you how what I do from here I just open it up a can and I'm gonna open it up a can get it <laughs> ah, some of you won't get it bless your hearts voila now I'm gonna put a layer full over that and stick it in the fridge it's 1230 I won't heat these up till about 430 so I'll stick them in the fridge and we'll do the um, beef well, I'll show you a pan of beef. I have 26 enchiladas in here. 26 in the other, that's 52. We still got to make deer enchiladas. And I'm planning to make 20 of those. So, man, that'll give us 72 enchiladas. Plus cheesy chicken rice. Plus some Rotel cheese dip. And um, chips and salsa. I ought to make a pretty good meal. I'll show you making the deer, how I make the deer, roll up the deer enchiladas next. All right, um, for the deer meat, I'm using a smaller pan. I'm getting 10 enchiladas to a pan, so I'm going to have a total of 20 here. And um, so I'm just taking this deer meat, which is a little looser than the chicken, more like the beef, and I usually put about two spoonfuls per tortilla. Set this over here where you can see what's happening. So, as you can see, I just loosely two scoops. You don't have to get real fancy with it when you roll it up. It's going to take care of itself. I put a good amount of cheese in there. Without the cheese on the inside, sometimes they want to fall apart. I kind of use the cheese like a glue. Once you heat them up, they melt together and everything sticks together. And, and I like cheese and I'm cooking, so... Kind of like my mama said, take it or leave it. Roll it, stick it over to one side of the pan. Then you're just going to fold it over. You don't have to be real particular about this. The first few times I made enchiladas, I was wanting to fold the ends in and wrap them up like a chimichanga. When you're making 70 of these, you don't have time to do that. And you may have a few pieces fall out like that right there. That's fine. Just scoot them over. When you do your next one, put two scoops of meat. Grab your leftovers, throw them in there. Grab some cheese. Like that, fold it. And you see how I, the flap is, is, is wanting to unroll this way? Put that on bottom and back it up to the others and it will keep it from unrolling. I was in a bigger hurry to get a bigger spoon, but this is working. Remember, we don't want to cover them completely. Then you'll have people trying to dig enchiladas out and they're cutting them down the middle and getting two halves instead of one whole. You just want enough cheese on there so that it looks good when it comes out of the oven. 
Any, everything looks good with melted cheese on top. Except biscuits and gravy. Everything but biscuits and gravy looks good with melted cheese on top. It's at this point that a little quality control is in order. I have about yay much that will not fit. So I make a gigantic taco burrito enchilada chimichanga. Mm. And nobody would know that that is deer meat. Nobody would know. I mean, there's, there's, there's so many flavors going on, you wouldn't know it. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Well, bless God, if I was a pastor down there, I'd, they'd be eating deer meat and they'd like it. Well, that's why you're not the pastor down here. And I don't want to trick people or people. Some people, you know, they just they get sick at the thought of eating deer meat. So if you don't want to eat deer meat, that's fine. But if you do want to eat deer meat or if you want to try it or if you want to see if you think you might like it, there will be two pans of enchiladas on the buffet line with the chicken and the beef. They'll be clearly marked, and you can try it. And that's the way you should serve deer meat. Uh, I used to doctor it up and serve it, and people would eat it. Did you like supper? Oh, that was great. You ate deer meat, and then they'd go get sick and throw up. And it wasn't because it tasted bad. It was because in their mind, it's the thought of deer meat. Anyways, we don't really have anybody like that in our church, but if we did, I wouldn't want them to feel that way. So a pastor must maintain his integrity, I'm going to tell them which is deer, and if they don't want it, that's fine. It's more for me. I hate to turn off the Marshall Tucker van, but it's the way it is. This has been in here for 45 minutes at 3.75. Let's have a peek and make sure they are cooked. God, come look at this. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Two pans of deer will go side by side on the top. 45 minutes. We eat in exactly 45 minutes. So we eat in 45 minutes. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to let these sit on the counter. They're going to stay hot for a while. It's 15 till 5. We eat at 5.30. At 5.10, I'm going to put this one on the bottom rack for 10 minutes. 520, I'm going to put this one on the bottom rack for 10 minutes. That will ensure that the outside temperature stays up. You want to have a look at the uh, chicken? Whew, man. What you talking about? What are you talking about? You're welcome. Oh, I don't know. A couple years ago, I couldn't That's supper.